Hi. In this lecture, I'll be talking about the excretory system in insects. If you look at the various anatomical systems in insects, the excretory system is located at the junction of midgut and hindgut. That means the chief excretory organs, the alphagen tubules, are located at the junction of midgut and hindgut. So that means they are in close association with the digestive system. Before getting into the insect system, we'll see why excretion is important. Say, for example, in animals like human beings, the lot of metabolic activities which taken place leads to the release of lot of toxic substances into the blood. So those toxic substances has to be eliminated out of the body. If they are not eliminated out of the body, the physiological process which occurs in the no body will be affected. So excretion is very important. So the important organs in human beings which help in now, filtering the blood are the kidneys. You just imagine if the kidney fails, what happens? So the person has to be sent for dialysis. So the kidney try to you know, keep the body under physiological homeostasis. Same thing happens in case of insects. So physiological homeostasis means maintenance of constant internal body environment. Okay, that is actually possible if you know, all the metabolic wastes which are accumulated in the body has to be removed out. Okay, so the important waste materials in animals are the nitrogenous compounds which are accumulated in the blood. So the process of elimination of these nitrogenous wastes from the body is called excretion. So the chief excretory organs in insects are the malphigen tubules and the partly some of these excretory process also occurs in hindgut. So we'll take one by one, what are the important organs involved in excretions? So as I was telling, the important organs involved in excretion are the malphigian tubules. They are located at the junction of midgut and hindgut. So they were first discovered by Marcelo Malfigi in the year 1669. And when he discovered, he named it as Vasa varicosa. But in the year 1899, they were renamed as no, malphigian tubules by Meckel. So in fact, they are very long, slender. They are you know, freely moving in the emoling, directly bathed by the you know, blood. So they will be, you no, know, they will be present at the junction of midgut and endgut. They will be freely moving. So you can see here, they are located at the junction of midgut and endgut. So similar to the lumen of the gut. So if you take the transfer section of the malphigian tubules, they do have the tubes inside, the channels inside. Okay, so covered by the epithelial cells and the, the basement membrane and supported by the longitudinal muscles so that they are flexible. Okay, so they vary in length, number, form, structure in various group of insects. Okay, so usually they occur in multiples of two, but there are exceptions. Okay, they may be two in scale insects, five in mosquitoes, six in moths and butterflies, 16 cockroach, 150 in honeybees, 200 in dragonflies and grasshoppers. Okay, but many of the insects lack malphigian tubules as well. So like in case of aphids, columbolans, certain silverfish, tysonurans lack these malphigian tubules. So other important organ involved in excretion are the rectum. Okay, so the rectum is in fact located at the you know, hind gut region. So this rectum is a, a enlarged tube in fact. It has got you no know, thin epithelial cells in most of the places, but some of the epithelial cells are enlarged. So that is called rectal papillae or rectal pads. So which also partly involved in excretion by absorbing the beneficial of the, the important nutrients before sending the excreta into the out of the body as feces. So we'll take into you know, that matter little later. So other important organs involved in excretion are the fat bodies. So these fat bodies, in fact, have got some of the cells which are modified to store the uric acid, the nitrogenous waste substance. So those are called urate cells. So these urate cells are scatteredly distributed in fat body and 
these urate cells store this uric acid in crystalline form which is in armless form so these type of urate cells are called storage kidneys and this process of elimination of nitrogenous waste waste through the urate cells is called storage excretion the other cells involved in excretion which are also scattered in fat body cells are the nephrocytes so these nephrocytes remove chemicals of high molecular weight such as dyes and polyhedral particles but not bacteria the next organ of excretion is enocytes so these enocytes are also scattered in the in the emocil and they are also partly involved in excretion integument so we know that the frequently insects actually molt so the some of the metabolic waste are transferred and placed on the integument so once the insect molts and exuvia is shed so that waste substance will be eliminated out of the body so except the the malfusion tubules all other organs are you know involved in excretion in a very limited extent so that means the chief excretory organs present in insects are the malfusion tubules so let us see what actually the excreta or the feces of insects contain yes the excreta of insects contain nitrogenous products excretion by insects is generally termed as nitrogenous excretion so insects may eliminate the excreta in the form of pellets okay or liquid so both of these are terrestrial insects but still many of the terrestrial insects eliminate the excreta in the form of no almost no semi solid substance or it may be in the form of liquid whereas many of these terrestrial insects eliminate no excreta in the form of water or the ex nitrogenous excreta will be no mixed with the water and eliminated out of the body so that means the the nitrogenous product which is eliminated depends on the the type of habitat in which these insects survives so insects may survive in terrestrial habitat or they may survive in aquatic habitat so in fact most terrestrial insects excrete waste product in the form of uric acid or which is also called urine which is non toxic to tissues but it cannot be you know, keep on storing inside the emolymph it has to be eliminated on and off it is water insoluble it requires less amount of water for waste product removal so this is very important in fact so as the terrestrial insects depend entirely on the food in order to you know take the water they have to conserve the water before eliminating the waste substance so it actually absorbs most of the water so that only the waste substance will be eliminated out of the body that is the importance of water in fact for the terrestrial insects whereas the aquatic insects there is no problem of water so they release excreta in the form of ammonia which is highly toxic to tissues it is water soluble and requires more amount of water for waste product removal so you see here the terminology used for this nitrogenous product excretion in case of terrestrial insects is called uricotelism or the organism which release the you know, excreta in the form of uric acid or urine are called uricotelic organism or aquatic insects which release excreta in the form of ammonia are called ammonotelism and those organisms are called ammonotelic organism so that is the difference between the what actually the excreta contains it depends on the type of habitat in which these insects survive so let us look at the how the excretion takes place what is the process in which these nitrogenous product will be eliminated out of the body okay so in order to explain this process i am taking the the junction of mid gut and end gut so we know that at the junction of mid gut and end gut malfusion tubules are located so the number of malfusion tubules vary depending on the species so for convenience i am trying to enhance one of the malfusion tubules so the process is better understood okay so i'm just extending one of the malfusion tubules this way and we you see here this is the distal end of malfusion tubule whereas the base from where the malfusion tubule arises at the junction of mid gut and end gut is considered as proximal end okay so this is the distal end of malfusion tubule and this is the proximal end of malfusion tubule okay so the products which are actually absorbed with the energy with the involvement of energy is shown in this way which is active transport 
So the, the products are just diffused because of the variation in the concentration gradient, which is called passive moment or passive transport. So this is the emocil part. Okay. So for my convenience, I am just not taking one malfusion tubules. So in fact, the process of excretion occurs in two stages. In the stage first, which occurs in distal end of malfusion tubule, where relatively unselective removal of substance, that waste substance from the emolymph occurs, which leads to formation of primary urine. Okay, so as I said, it occurs in the malfusion tubules. So more specifically, it occurs in the distal end of malfusion tubules. In the second stage, so whatever the primary urine which is formed in the distal end of malfusion tubules will be altered. Okay, by resorbing some of the useful components which are present in the, the primary urine. So that occurs in malfusion tubules, more specifically in the proximal end of malfusion tubule and the hindgut region. So maybe in ileum or rectum region of hindgut. So we'll proceed further in order to better understand the, these two stages. Say what happens? So it has the nitrogenous you know, you know, products get accumulated in the emolymph. So these nitrogenous products, more especially the uric acid, Uric acid, as I was telling, it is actually insoluble in water. So what happens, this uric acid actually combines with potassium or sodium, leading to formation of sodium and potassium urates. Then it becomes soluble, in fact. So this soluble sodium and potassium urate, okay, is actively transported into the distal end of malfusion tubules. This is actually a secretory part of malfusion tubule. The distal end is also called secretory part of malfusion tubule. So the sodium and potassium urates are actively transported into the distal end. So once they, they are transported because of the variation in the concentration gradient, immediately water also passively moves. Okay, water passively moves. Once that is done, so there will be a lot of variation in the concentration gradients of various ions. So what happens? Other ions, okay, sugars and amino acids are also transported passively without the involvement of energy. So all that which enters into the distal end of malfusion tubule leads to formation of primary urine which is in the liquid form. So the first step which occurs in the distal end of malfusion tubule is actually the formation of primary urine in distal end of malfusion tubule. Okay, that is this part. So what happens then? So this, this is where the primary urine is. No? produced. So then in the second step, what happens? So I was telling that the primary urine which is produced is, is actually altered, which is modified. So once that primary urine which is produced in the distal end is actually moved to the proximal end because of the action of various cilia, various hair-like structure which are present in the, the malfusion tubules. So which moves the, this primary urine towards the proximal end. So once it reaches the proximal end, you can see here the potassium and sodium, which is the most useful substance. In fact, no insects cannot sustain by losing these ions. So it has to be absorbed back. So it is a beneficial ion in fact. So these potassium and sodium ions are absorbed. So once it is started absorbed, so you water also passively enters into the emocil back. So once the water actually reabsorbed, so whatever the primary urine which is in liquid form turns into semi-solid form. Okay, so that becomes semi-solid uric acid. So once it becomes semi-solid, it moves to the hindgut region. Okay, so it will be pushed to the hindgut region. So then from there, it starts moving towards the, the ileum, colon and rectum. So in the rectum more specifically, I was telling that very important function performed by the rectal region is actually absorption of useful components. So the useful component absorption may take place in the proximal end itself, but not all the, the useful components like you know, potassium, sodium or the water cannot be absorbed successfully. So that function is performed by the rectum in fact. So rectum consists of rectal pads or rectal papillae where these 
the remaining potassium sodium water some other useful components like amino acids sugars will be successfully absorbed okay so once the all these you no know, useful components are absorbed the nitrogenous waste substance that is uric acid along with the other you no know, toxic substance like alkaloids will be eliminated out of the body which is almost semi solid or if they are in, the insect is so efficient it absorbs all the water so that the solid excreta or feces will be eliminated out of the body so that's how the uric acid the nitrogenous waste is excreted eliminated or eliminated out of the body so the first step is formation of primary urine which occurs in case of distal end of malpighian tubule whereas in the proximal end and in the hind gut region the modification of primary urine occurs so that all the useful components will be absorbed into the mucil into the mucil and only the waste substance will be eliminated out of the body so let us look at the other functions performed by the malpighian tubules so as i was telling the main function of malpighian tubule is is involving in excretion in some of the insects the malpighian tubules perform different function it may be production of spittle in a nymphs of spittle bug so which are belongs to family sarcopidae in memtra okay i think commonly if you go you no know, wild side you will definitely come across you know this type of spittle on various plants okay so if you open up you know you find the nymphs inside so these nymphs actually secretes the the spittle within which these you no know, nymphs survive so these become subadults like this there are number of species of course other functions in neuroptera for example so we know that these ant lions chrysoperla other day we were talking about the those insects which lay the you no know, pedicellate type of eggs okay so these ant lion grubs they secrete the pupal cocoon in order to cover the pupa okay so the last insect grub actually secretes so that acts as a you no know, protective organ for the pupa so that function is in fact produced by the the malpighian tubule remember in case of larval lepidoptera the silk or the cocoon is produced by the labial glands mean salivary glands which are modified labial gland which acts as a cocoon in order to protect the pupa that is the difference between the neuroptera and pupa and the lepidoptera and pupa so in some insects like bolitophila or arachnocapa where in other day we were discussing about the bioluminescence they these maggots actually produce the light here the malpighian tubules produce the light so like well known insects like fireflies where the light producing photogenic organs are present are the sixth or seventh abdominal segment here the malpighian tubules produce the light so these are the few other functions performed by the malpighian tubules let us see is there any variation occurs in the malpighian tubules i was telling that malpighian tubules are usually freely bathing or flowing in the emocil directly bathed by the emolin but in few of the insects like adult coleoptera you might have seen some of the insects which live in you no know, gram floor and all so in gram floor and all definitely will not find any water okay so these insects you has to conserve all the water which you no know, which gets to them within that floor so that means the water conservation should be very efficient similarly in case of larval lepidoptera they are also depending on the food for the water similarly the larval symphyta the uh, tenth day in a day which are belongs to order hymenoptera so there is a different mechanism which through which water is conserved so how about the malpighian tubules are modified here so instead of the distal end of malpighian tubules which are usually free in most of the insects here the distal ends are actually attached to the rectum region like this you can see here okay which is not free if you no extend this part you can see here these malpighian tubules are attached to rectum with the help of a membrane called perineptric membrane okay so as usual here also the the distal end water ions will be absorbed it goes to the midgut and gut reach you no know, junction and then it will be pushed to the rectum region so i was telling that the potassium sodium amino acid sugars water 
will be absorbed in the rectum region so here the mechanism is so efficient that whatever the water with the very little molecule of water which is present will be successfully absorbed back into the malfeasant tubule so that there will be no wastage of single drop of water single molecule of water so this type of modification wherein the distal end of malfeasant tubules are not free but they are attached to the rectum region is called cryptonephridial condition crypto hiding nephridia means malfeasant tubules almost they look like hiding are attached to the the end gut region so this is called cryptonephridial condition and the importance of this is efficient absorption of water okay before sending the feces or excreta out of the body so in this class we discussed about the importance of excretory system organs involved in excretion chief excretory organs are malfeasant tubules others rectum nephrocytes enocytes integument the contents of excreta whether they are ericotelic organism or monotelism organism process of excretion which occurs in two step formation of primary urine and then the selective modification of that primary urine which you no know, primarily takes place in malfeasant tubules whereas you no know, malfeasant tubules also involve in some other functions in different group of insects and then finally we discussed about the cryptonephridial condition okay so for competitive exam so some important questions which you may be thorough with are the in which insects these malfeasant tubules are absent formation of primary urine occurs at you no know, which region of malfeasant tubules what are the storage kidneys what is amonotelism and uricotelism describe the process of excretion with a neat diagram what is the significance of spittle production in spittle bugs what is cryptonephridial condition and examples okay which i was telling so for further reading i suggest chapman book the title of the book is the insects structure and function the insects an outline of entomology by gulan and cranston well known book the borer and dilang's introduction to study of insects by triple r and jansen so if you are more question you can you know post below or also you can you know put a mail thank you thank you very much for your patience